Hi everyone, my name is Shana Lee and I'm an Applications Chemist in the Life Science Division at CEM. Today, I want to talk to you about how microwave technology can overcome the challenges in traditional undergraduate teaching and research labs. I'll discuss how it can be a powerful tool to helping develop independence in students and some strategies for incorporating microwave systems into a curriculum. So first off, I'd like to talk a little bit about undergraduate labs. Undergraduate labs are a requisite for a well-rounded education in any of the physical sciences, and they do have important functions. They introduce future scientists to basic laboratory instrumentation and techniques. They also help reinforce concepts learned from lecture while also teaching students practical hands-on skills. That said, however, it has long been known that these sort of classes do suffer from some inherent challenges. Two of those are duration and the allocation of time. Labs typically last anywhere from one to four hours, and unfortunately, a large percentage of that time is often spent suboptimally for both instructors and students alike. One of the activities that commonly eats up a lot of time is just simply setting up a reaction. This can involve the assembly of some sort of complex apparatus setup or just multiple moving parts. Now, the more students there are in a class, the more long this takes, naturally. That, all of that is on top of actually running the reaction as well, which can also take up a large amount of time. In comparison, the analysis and discussion portion of lab that actually builds critical thinking skills is often rushed and inadequate. Perhaps the biggest challenge of all of undergraduate teaching labs is the mindset that's fostered. Students are often pushed towards finding some predetermined right or wrong answer or asking simplistic questions like, do the reaction work or not work as opposed to why? Now, due to you know, the typical constraints of these type of classes, like time, class size, and just experience level, promoting scientific curiosity just often gets pushed to the wayside. A common solution for addressing the weaknesses of traditional undergraduate labs is to supplement with research experience. This is beneficial for all parties involved. For students, this is a short-term, risk-free way to explore whether a career in the sciences or a particular field is a good fit. It also gives them experience and resume content, which is helpful since many graduate programs and industries in the sciences require for applicants to have undergraduate research experience. Summer internships on top of field exploration can also be sources of income for many students. Now for educators, gaining an undergraduate in your lab is also another form of education, but this time instead of teaching a general class, you can teach the topics that you're most passionate about, your own research. Undergraduates are often blank canvases, which you can mold to your research practices and perhaps one day incorporate into your group as a graduate student. New minds can also bring about help and new perspectives uh, to your research. For industries, having applicants with hands-on experience and who already know how to think like researchers can be highly favorable. Oftentimes, those who participate in research as undergrads already have learned valuable workplace skills, such as professional communication and teamwork. Undergrad research is not a perfect solution to the challenges of teaching labs, however. From a professor's point of view, funding is an incredibly huge obstacle. Reagents, lab operation, and salaries all require money. As novice researchers, undergrads will also need supervision and coaching, which means if they're staying late to finish up a project, professors and graduate students, like yourself, are right there with them. For students with a workload anywhere between 13 and 23 credit hours a semester, adding on a few extra ones for research can be overly taxing. Again, they will also need mentoring as beginners in research. Now, a commonality amongst the challenges for any group I've mentioned so far, be it for undergraduate labs versus research or students versus professors, is time. If only there is more time, a few of these other challenges could resolve themselves as well. With more time, students could gain more experience and develop basic research skills sooner. Professors would also have more time to prepare grants. Now, what if there is a simple and affordable solution that could easily be implemented in the curriculum that could give us just that? Now, microwave reactors have long been standard equipment in teaching labs, as well as pharmaceutical and chemical industries. This is due to a number of benefits, but by far the one that's received the most attention is the drastic reduction of runtime due to highly efficient heating. Adapting a conventionally heated reaction with use of a microwave will often reduce hours of heating to mere minutes. You can imagine just what kind of work can be accomplished in any lab with the amount of time gained back from this. That said, let's explore some of these benefits to microwave technology in a lab. 
So let's start with the most well-known benefit of microwave heating, speed. With conventional heating, a sample is heated indirectly through conduction, which is a slow and inefficient process that depends on the thermal conductivity of the vessel. With microwaves, any polarizable molecules or ions of the sample are being directly activated so that heating is extremely quick and effective. This superior control allows higher temperatures to be accessible and quicker, independent of external factors like volume or the thickness of the vessel. As I mentioned earlier, reactions that typically took hours now can be completed in just a matter of minutes. Students can now spend just a fraction of their usual lab time on running their reaction and more on the more meaningful or analytical parts of their work. Shorter reactions also open up a broad range of experiments and thus curriculum structure that might have been impractical before. Many important synthetic reactions described in undergrad textbooks are currently excluded in the laboratory curriculum owing to long reaction times and high temperatures. With the rapid heating benefits of microwave technology, however, traditionally long, time-intensive reactions like couplings and cycloadditions, or even multi-day, multi-step syntheses are now options in the span of a typical lab. This ultimately affords instructors greater freedom in the design of their curriculum, and students can experiment with chemistry that they would not get to normally. Microwaves also offer ultimate reaction control in terms of temperature and pressure. While standard lab glassware can be used for open vessel reactions, sealed reactions that allow for heating above reflex are also possible. Many scientific microwaves have the ability to regulate pressure as well, while some even have uh, programmable venting options at specific set points. This allows for excess pressure or gaseous byproducts to be released released in a safe, hands-free way that also shifts the reaction forward. Temperature can also be easily modulated through the power output, both during programming of the method and in real time. Now, being able to adjust the power by as little as a single watt allows for precise temperature control that's just not possible with conventional means. Anyone who has ever overshot their target with a hot plate and spent too much time trying to reverse this can appreciate this feature. A huge factor in the appeal of microwaves is, for all their value, they're also actually quite affordable. As multi-purpose equipment, they can be used for both teaching students and performing personal research. They're also useful across a vast range of applications in both organic and inorganic synthesis. Just within the realm of nanomaterials alone, there are numerous fields in which microwave technology has been instrumental. Now, other special features that are available with some microwave systems are flow chemistry, subambient temperatures, and also gaseous reagents. Something that makes microwaves particularly ideal for undergraduate teaching and research labs is their ease of use and in a safe way. Reaction programming is simple and intuitive, where parameters such as time, temperature, and power can be entered through a touchpad. These variables can be modified instantly during a run. Pressurized reactions are just as easy to set up. The sample is simply prepped, capped, and then placed inside of the microwave reactor where it's safely isolated from the user in the event of any incidents. As mentioned earlier, some systems also have pressure control that allow for set points to be programmed. When these are exceeded, the system will either terminate the run or safely vent the excess generated gas without interrupting the reaction. Since microwaves have been a standard in many labs across multiple industries for years now, there's an abundance of microwave chemistry references that can be used to jumpstart both teaching experiments and more in-depth research. There are currently numerous ACS publications where educators like yourself have published microwave-assisted experiments and full course curriculums for organic, inorganic, and analytical chemistry lab courses. The Journal of Chemical Education and the Journal of Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering are a couple that I would highly recommend. A few customers I know have actually taken a step further and incorporated microwaves in high school outreach programs and advanced research courses. These courses challenge students to identify a problematic chemical transformation and utilize green chemistry practices or instrumentation, like a microwave, to optimize. That actually brings me to my next point. Microwaves are an extremely easy way through which to demonstrate green technology and to teach students about sustainable chemistry. Especially in the past few years, sustainability in the chemical industry has received increasing amounts of attention and is a promising field to introduce students to early on. Microwave chemistry inherently requires less energy and solvent and produces fewer undesirable side products. These qualities make it ideal for demonstrating such tenets of green chemistry as waste prevention, atom economy, and safer solvent usage. 
There are already many existing publications that can serve as resources for ideas incorporating microtechnology into green experiments. These experiments are opportunities to not only teach about sustainability, but reinforce other fundamental chemistry concepts that are important, like stoichiometry or Le Chatelier's principle, which can be especially helpful for novice uh, researchers like undergraduate students. This gives students a different approach to learning and allows instructors some freedom to explore new fields. So in summary, there are many benefits to integrating a microwave into either teaching or research. Due to selective heating, microwaves can achieve higher temperatures in a fraction of the time taken by conventional means. The ability to precisely control all reaction parameters, such as temperature, pressure, and power output, allows for greater flexibility in the types of reactions that can be performed. That ultimately enables more freedom in content structuring of curriculums as well as in research. For professors who might be inexperienced with microwave chemistry, this technology is extremely approachable due to the abundance of publications across many fields that can serve as teaching resources. Microwave systems are also very affordable for being such multi-purpose tools. They are used across, across a wide variety of fields and applications in both academic and industrial settings. They're also extremely easy and safe to operate, which is really important when you have anywhere from 10 to 30 students who are still learning basic laboratory skills. Some systems on the market even offer specific safety features like hands-free pressure regulation. Also, with the push towards sustainability across many industries the past few years, now is an especially relevant time to introduce students to green chemistry. As an inherently green technology, microwaves can be adapted effortlessly to demonstrate principles of green chemistry like solvent and energy conservation. So let's say you decide sometime in the near future to test out these benefits for yourself. How do you decide which type of microwave is right for your lab? Microwaves can be classified as one of two types based off the design of their cavity, a single mode or a multi-mode cavity. If you have a smaller class size of, say, 10 to 12 students, or just want one for research, the single mode would be most ideal. It has the capacity of a single standing wave, which lends the advantage of high power density that is very uniform for quick and even heating. A limited cavity size is required for maintaining that dense power distribution and makes these type of microwaves best suited for sequential or research scale reactions. Since reactions can be completed in a matter of minutes, some students can run while others prep their samples or work on another part of the assignment. Now, a multi-mode microwave is better for bigger classes as they are typically larger than a uh, single mode and can accommodate multi uh, multiple standing waves. Although this type of microwave has a less homogeneous power distribution, it's tailored for scale-up and batch reactions, so many students can run identical samples simultaneously. Here we see CEM's Discover 2.0, a single-mode microwave instrument. Again, this is a design that's best suited for research and smaller class sizes. With just three vessel sizes, you can use a wide range of pressurized reaction volumes from 200 microliters to 75 mils. Alternatively, standard glassware like uh, round-bottom flasks and condensers can also be used for open vessel reactions. This versatility makes incorporating a microwave into someone's workflow, whether in teaching or in research, easy and painless. Now, regardless of the type of chemistry being performed, the Discover is also a highly adaptable instrument with limits up to 435 PSI and 300 degrees Celsius, all achievable with mo no more than 300 watts of power. It's also the most flexible system on the market. With the appropriate accessories, the Discover can be adapted for a number of other applications, including flow chemistry, gaseous reagents, and enzymatic digestion. One of the most popular accessories for academics is the auto sampler, which allows students to simply queue up 48 different uh, samples at a time. Now, if you have more than 12 students in a class or are more interested in high throughput, the larger multi-mode microwave from CEM is the Mars 6. In a single run, the system can perform up to 36 parallel pressurized reactions with a working volume of 14 to 75 mils of vessel. Standard atmospheric reactions up to 3.5 liters are also possible. The Mars is ideal for difficult uh, chemistry that requires more rigorous conditions. It's compatible with not only glass and quartz, but also Teflon vessels, with limits up to 300 degrees Celsius and 800 PSI. The system has easily customizable methods that can be modified by a touchscreen, just like with the Discover 2.0, but it also offers pre-programmed methods that both new and experienced users alike can take advantage of.
Now let's shift gears a bit and see how someone has incorporated one of our microwaves into her teaching. Dr. Ann Nally at Cameron University uses one of our Discover systems in her undergraduate chemistry labs, but has also integrated them into a summer outreach program for high school students interested in nanotechnology. Ann had the students perform uh, a multi-step organic synthesis where they made their own lye soap scented with fruity esters they had synthesized earlier. Her microwave system was equipped with uh, an accessory called the Explorer, a robotic arm that allows for auto sampling, so all students had to do was cue their samples. During just a short period, these students gained first-hand experience of a college uh, or undergraduate level synthetic lab and the application of robotics in chemistry. Now that was just one example of microwaves in teaching. In this next one, I'd like to demonstrate an advanced project through which microwaves can be used to foster complex problem solving skills. This was designed with the following underlying goals in mind, to have students be able to independently develop rational, systematic planning skills, practice analysis of data and results, learn how to modify their reactions accordingly, and improve written and oral communication skills. So a common type of experiment performed in a microwave is adapting a conventionally heated transformation for microwave heating. Here we have a heck reaction of iodobenzene with methyl acrylate. Now under conventional heating protocol, the transformation is limited to 80 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of a pseudonic trial, and takes 20 hours for completion. Not exactly ideal for a lab. So to optimize this uh, reaction, there are three parameters that can be modified. Solvent, temperature, and time. By isolating and optimizing each of these individual variables in an iterative process, this 20-hour transformation was converted to a 5-minute NEAT method in the Discover microwave system. The solvent savings and reduction in energy usage makes this also a great example of applying green chemistry principles to a common reaction. Now, if you're interested in a written overview of this process, don't worry. The app note for app, uh, adapting a conventional synthesis for use with the microwave system is available on the CEM website. So another similar but more advanced version of this experiment could be to have students screen and optimize reactions to further faculty research. This alternative fits nicely into the movement among an increasing number of professors to change their chemistry programs. In a recent CNN article, faculty at different universities discuss how they've been bringing research into their teaching labs. At Skidmore College, students work on projects related to their professor's research in class. For example, synthesizing analogs of a molecule of interest or characterizing the properties and activity of protein mutants. At Carroll College, the upper level labs are all combined into a single year long lab that students spend working individually on faculty research projects, rotating through four week modules. At the end of each module, they then gather to discuss their progress and hand the projects on to the next student to continue. Now, with either of these models, a versatile tool like a microwave system would be a tremendous resource that could be easily and affordably integrated. At its simplest, this technology would expedite experiments and research. At its fullest potential, however, it could have an instrumental role in driving the research and helping students think differently about the problems they're studying. So in summary, I hope I've managed to convince you all that combining undergraduate research and teaching is possible, as well as give you some ideas on how that could be accomplished with help from microwave technology. As you've all now seen, microwave systems are a valuable asset that can be effortlessly incorporated into any type of workflow, whether that be in the classroom or in research. They're not great simply for improving the efficiency of labs, but ultimately have the capacity to really enrich a student's learning experience and thus their critical thinking capacity in a way that traditional labs just simply do not. If you have any questions about any of CEM's microwaves or anything else I've mentioned so far in this presentation, please feel free to call me at the number listed here or email me. All right, thank you all for your time.